All right, welcome everybody to our exam two review. Um, I will be sharing with you guys some information and I'm gonna review uh, the best I can. Were there any questions at all? It'll be a 50 question test, five math, okay? Same as last time. You'll see primary, secondary, and tertiary on here uh, like you did last one. And let me just, I have a PowerPoint that I'll go over with you guys so you have something to review. And um, any questions before I start? All righty. Let's see here. I just have to open it. Just give me a second. All right, so the study guide is really good. It's helpful for us. So if you want to uh, look at that. That's a good thing to look at. And we're going to take a look at this PowerPoint. All right. So the first thing we look at is going to be our rural community. Uh, we look at the consequences of poverty in this rural community. We know our highest risk group is going to be our kids, minorities, single families, especially those that are headed by a woman. And our Hispanic rate is the most uh, at risk. So our number with college degrees and poverty areas is going to be far lower. And this gap has increased over time. Okay, so what do you think that's going to do to unemployment? Make it go up? Yeah, of course, make it go up. Good. And then when we take a look at our rural communities, what do we look at here? So I want you guys to look at the pictures and they sort of help you out here. So we know that they're bent over half the time, right? 12 to 14 hours a day takes a toll on them. Their back and their neck are gonna be our most common types of chronic pain. Low back pain that radiates into one leg we know is sciatica. And the uh, nurse is going to assess why? the client to see whether it's increased by any of the following. If they like, it'll be increased by things like bending, lifting, sneezing, coughing, that kind of stuff. Okay. Let me just. Hold on. There we go. I'm just going to do us as a slideshow so you guys can see. Mm -hmm. All right, so we take a look at those people, right? And then we look at our health risks in those rural communities. What do we know about our rural population? They don't have a lot of leisure time. They uh, have a lower rate of compliance with things like seatbelts. And very important, chronic disease is more prevalent, meaning you see chronic disease more in our rural communities. Remember, because they know each other very well. And so they're not going to share with uh, healthcare providers about things like abuse, about um, domestic violence, because they're afraid that their neighbors are going to find out about it. Okay. So they're far less likely to report sexual assault, drug use, or any mental health, because they worry everybody else is going to know about it. When we're looking at our primary and secondary, uh, primary and tertiary, and secondary things for our migrant workers to, because there are pesticides that are sprayed everywhere, we're gonna prevent exposure. So we're gonna provide education, right? And teach about risks. Secondary, we're gonna conduct screenings, right? And we're gonna give those hand washing stations to decrease the risk. And then treatment for pesticide is gonna be such things as, no, I mean, is treating them for symptoms of pesticide exposure when we see things such as nausea, vomiting, and skin irritation, right? Because that's our treatment, our tertiary. We look at, um, there's a decrease increase in health status when compared to urban clients in our rural communities. Rural clients are less likely to participate in activities like we talked about less likely to wear our seatbelts and chronic disease is more prevalent. So this is a repeated slide of the first one. Okay, any questions about our rural communities? Yeah. 
No, ma'am. Okay. And then we look at culture. We know about Mexican culture. What they like is to have the nurse be the authority figure, maintain their dignity, be able to relate. Our Mexican culture, they like some chit chat before we address any concerns, okay? And touching is seen as a caring gesture in our Mexican culture. Families with our fast families with children are our fastest group of our vulnerable homeless population. They're growing the most. Single motherhood is increasing. We know that there is a direct correlation between lack of education and poverty, and a direct correlation exists between poverty and poor health outcomes. So we know that poor teens are three times more likely to drop out of school, and it's important to keep our pregnant adolescents in school during the pregnancy so that she can get back to school as soon as possible, because then she won't allow herself into that uh, poverty environment. All right, homeless access to healthcare. Where do the homeless get their care? In the ERs, right? So they have the same problem accessing care as do those in poverty. So it's usually crisis oriented, meaning uh, they go in the ER because something has happened. And so our cost of service is high, but it is uh, in our ERs, we can't really refuse them. So it takes a toll on the healthcare system as a whole. Homeless adolescents living on the street, we see them having earlier onset of sexual activity. They're gonna be our ones who are at higher risk for those communicable diseases, right? more likely to use drugs and alcohol. So we look at those people who are vulnerable, HIV, um, know that they are susceptible. We know who's susceptible to that. Um, our IV drug users, recurrent sexual transmitted infections, and those who have multiple sex partners. When we're looking at our mental health and our youth, we know that we need to teach them about social skills. That'll decrease our violence among our youth. So we wanna do things like um, helping children to talk to one another, how to get along, those kind of things. Know the dangers of mixing drugs, medicine, and alcohol. What kind of discharge teaching would you do with Medications that depress the central nervous system. What are you going to tell them about alcohol? No alcohol. Right. No alcohol. Yep. Yep. Because they're going to, it's going to depress the whole central nervous system. We know that there is um, factors that make you more likely to use uh, drugs and alcohol, such as violence, trauma, mental illness. Right. And how would a nurse, what's a nurse going to teach the uh, the parents about vaping? No vaping. It's just as bad as smoking. Yeah. What is, what did we worry about? The carcinogen, the cancer. Mm, yep. Something else though with kids. Collapse lung. No. Little kids get in a hold of it. Good. LaShonda, tell us about little kids getting a hold of it. What do they get to? Uh, they get to the um the fluid that's in there. I don't very they, good. I the oil. Keep going. The oil. Perfect. So, and what does the oil do to them? Um you just taught me this. Why don't I remember? I did. That? You know. Yes, you did. I do. <laughs> It's um, poisonous to children, It's poisonous right? to kids, right. The vape oils are poisonous to kids, so we are going to teach those adults who uh, are around kids, don't let them get hold of that vape, okay? All right, we look at nicotine, how, uh, how we talk about vape products, and here you go. Vape oils are poisonous. Please make sure you know that. We talked about a congregational and institutional based nursing care. Remember, congregational is when they focus on a specific congregation. 
And so they take care of one large group all on their own. So they're very autonomous and congregational. And then they have institutional where um, they work with the church and other entities. So they help caring for the community with other people. Okay. I have a question. Uh -huh. um, would you say institutional is like prisons? Is that what you mean? No. Like so institutional is under is under um, under parish nursing as well. Okay. But what it does is this: the the nurse that works in the institution, meaning in the temple or the church or whatever, goes to some other community sources, say like a support group. And then brings them in, or we'll go to a nutritionist and have the nutritionist come in and teach healthy eating. You know, they're going to look at obesity, those kind of things. So you're going to create education programs with these people so that they can teach to the church. So what would you say the other one is, the, con the congregational? So that's when it's just the nurse all on her own. She's not going to have other people help her. Okay. She's going to go and take care of everybody and do the best she can. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, there's two words on here that I want you guys to know with rural health nursing, and that's going to be our spirituality and our religiosity. Spirituality is like our attitude and beliefs about God. And then religiosity is what we do with a specific religion. So our, our traditions, like whatever we believe and whatever we act in. Okay, so those are two definitions that I like you guys to know. So for a parish nurse, some things she can do, hold a class with youth and parents on healthy eating, encourage a variety of activities. This is if we're working with obesity, okay? Encourage a variety of activities and discourage extended inactivity, encourage healthy snacks, encourage parents to be proactive and make sure that they're uh, participating in, in sports, recreation leagues. With secondary prevention, we're gonna do weight screenings. And then when we get to tertiary, we're going to make sure that we um, do weight reduction, right? All right, when we're doing care plans and nursing process with our ADPI, you guys should be good at this by now, but we're going to make sure the nurse uh, steers the conversa uh, conversation toward goals to make sure that she is out identifying an outcome. What is it that they want to get out of this, right? What do they want to achieve when they're doing this uh, nursing? This is sort of goes along with home health a little bit. When discussing health problems and limitations, we know we're gathering history, okay, which is going to be part of our assessment. And then we can make a nursing diagnosis. Our planning is going to come after our outcomes have been identified so that the plan works. If we don't know what our outcomes are, we don't can't have a plan because it depends on what we're working for or our outcomes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now I need you guys to know the difference between Medicare and Medicaid. Okay. Medicare is going to make sure that you have to have nursing, skilled nursing care. So what are some examples of skilled nursing care? By physical therapy? Yeah, we're yeah. not gonna do physical therapy because we're nurses, but mm. go Great. along with something specific Great. we would do as a nurse. Wound Great care. care. Wound care. Wound care. Wound, Wound care. care. Good. Medication Wound. education. Wound. Boxes. Medication management. Uh -huh. I don't know if Medicare yeah. will cover that, but maybe. <laughs> it covers um home care, which is like um stopping rehospitalizations, right? Like right, education. but that's the the way they're going to do that is by doing a nursing skill. This is Medicare, remember. So Medicare is going to make sure that you have to do something that requires a nurse, and then they'll reimburse you. They are not going to let you have someone come in and help you get dressed. Okay, uh -uh. Medicare uh -huh. is not going to do that. Medicaid will, Medicare will not. All right. So anything that um, we know that Medicare and Medicaid are both. Um, federally funded, but Medicaid is state by state. It's administered by your state. Okay. The way to remember Medicaid is state by state. 
in addition to being federal, is that uh, Medicaid in every state is a different name. So that's how you know it's run by the state, okay? And um, and they have to be homebound to get that coverage for Medicare. All right, so Medicare, like I said, will only pay for home health care by skilled professionals while the client is homebound, where Medicaid doesn't necessarily say they need to be homebound. And Medicaid may give reimbursement for home health aids. So what ends up happening to a lot of our older clients is, is that they, they go from Medicare to Medicaid so they can get that assistance. Okay. Remember Medicare, the way I like to think about this has, has the word care in it. So we're taking care of those older people and Medicaid is going to be aid. We're giving aid to those that need it. Okay. So it's financial. There's just a little comparison for you guys to look at people over 65 disability uh, versus low income families. Medicare has hospital services medical care, prescription drugs, as is Medicaid. Low monthly premiums on your Medicare. So it's usually 80-20. Medicaid is not going to have a cost. And then enrollment, you don't have to know that. That was just a um, little thing. We look at hospice care, which was our chapter on home health care. What's our goal with that? Comfort. Comfort care. Yeah, and given dignity, right? Dignity to our patients at end of life and families. All right, we take a look at our federal agencies that help with community nursing. We have OSHA. We all know that that's our occupational health and safety. We have our World Health Organization. And we have Agency for Research and Quality. Right. All right, and then this last epidemiology we talked about tonight, you guys will learn this in your class this week if you have not had class yet. So epidemiology is gonna be our study of health-related things and why they happen. We look at the causes if we're doing analytical. So example, why do some people get things that other people don't and how does it occur? We look at that triangle, important please to know. I want you to think of examples for host, environment, and agent. So what are some things we look at with the host? Like their First, age, carry the illness. Race. Yep. Race, rage, age, age, race, gender, sex, uh, immunological status. We look at our environment, we look at our temperature, our altitude, crowding, housing, neighborhood, the water, pollution, noise, all that kind of stuff, all those things. And then our agent's gonna be that thing that causes an illness, right? So that's gonna be our bacteria, our alcohol, our smoke, our trauma, or lack of access. Disease is produced by exposure of a susceptible host to an agent and the environmental factors make it happen. So it's a triangle, so they're all interchangeable. So on your test, I want you to be able to identify if I said the patient's age is an example of blank, right? Is an example of their host abilities, okay? Okay, please know this definition, case fatality rate. So what it is, is it's the proportion of person diagnosed with a particular disease who die within a certain period. So people usually want to know this when they're diagnosed with a disease. They want to know, do I have a chance of surviving? Right? That's our case fatality rate. And it, that's exactly the words that it says. Case, how many numbers? Fatality, die, and rate. Individuals with immunocompromise, we know are at high risk for contaminated foods or waters. We know those are going to be people like on AIDS with chemotherapy, organ transplant, right? So this we should know from med surge. 
Um, all right, environmental health. What was our point in environmental health? To increase the proportion of work sites that offer an employee health promotion program. We wanna see an increase of work sites that offer an activity program. Increase uh, an employee nutrition program. Reduce deaths from work-related injuries. Reduce work-related assaults. Okay, that's our environmental. I'm sorry, that's actually our occupational health. We take a look at how does the environment impact our health. We know air, water, chemicals, climate change, environments, agricultural. So all these risk factors, you know, if you're exposed to some of them, pesticides is going to be a big one with respiratory system, right? So we think about that. With our environmental health, we're looking to increase our proportion of people who drink safe water. Our schools that have policies that promote health, promote health, sorry, and reduce the number of days that we have unhealthy air outside. Okay, when we take a look at our types of studies, you had a question on this on your last test. Okay, so our ecological is quick, easy, inexpensive first study. What it does is just gets data from places. You don't really study. You just look at the information, okay? You don't have to generate it. It's already generated for you. Then we have our cross-sectional, okay? Now, this has to do with epidemiology. Our cross-sectional is where we're going to have a description of a problem, and we look at a cross-section or a group of a population and look at how their health status and then collect information. Okay, so cross-section, we're looking at different types of things and exposures. Retrospective is gonna be when we rely on retro, which means backwards. So retro, these studies are gonna be um, to about things that people have been exposed to at some time in the past, okay? To see if they had an outcome. Okay, so I want you to know those type of studies, okay? And then we look at the role of the occupational health nurse, and we focus on preventative health care, health promotion. We're going to work in a bunch of settings, right? Manufacturing, industry, service, health care, construction, government. And we're really looking, they're going to try to prevent us from getting sick at work. Okay. So those are my PowerPoints. I'm going to stop, stop, stop sharing at this point. Let me just look over some of my notes here so that I make sure. Let's review. Let's see if you can tell me. What makes you susceptible to HIV? HIV drug use. Yep. Yep. High sexual um, behavior. What? A high risk sexual behavior. Yep. What else? Uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Don't forget that, right? If you have a high rate of those. Uh, if we're doing a drug screening at a school, what type of prevention is that? Secondary. Secondary. Good, because it's screening. Uh, why is healthcare so expensive for the homeless? Because they only go to the ER. Because they go to the ER, and that's really expensive, the ER. Anybody who works in a hospital knows how expensive the ER is, right? Um, what are we teaching them about vapes, our parents? That the oil was poisonous. Very good. Who is at high risk of drug and alcohol abuse? Pain. Homeless, adolescents. Uh, what kind of history are they going to have? Homeless, homeless, homeless adolescents, homeless teens. No. Nope. Well, yes, they're at risk. Of course, they always are. They're at risk for everything, though. But they're going to be at risk for use. But think about those history things like we talked about violence. Right. Trauma. Right. Uh, parents, genetics. 
Parents with addiction, you will see that repeat itself. And mental illness. Those are our big four things with our drug stuff use, right? Uh, let's see. What are some things we can do as a parish nurse for primary prevention? What could we do for primary prevention as a parish nurse? Would you start like a yoga class or something like that? Sure. You do an exercise class. What else could you do? You can educate people about eating healthy to prevent obesity. Good. And when you're teaching them about eating healthy, what do you think you're going to do? If anyone's ever been to a church that has snacks after the service, what kind Is of snacks healthy? are you going to make sure? Healthy hmm? snacks? Yeah. You're going to make sure they have healthy ones. Right. And I, I can remember being a kid and going to a religious group and we would always have cookies afterwards. That was definitely not good. We needed a parish nurse there. Mm -hmm. Um all right, governmental agencies. We look at agency for healthcare research and quality. That was one of our government <laughs> agencies. And we know that improves the quality in healthcare, right? It says exactly what it is, our agency for research and quality. Um, okay, what kinds of things are we gonna do for secondary prevention for our teens? Screenings. Um, yeah, for what? Um, what are teens likely to get involved in? Drugs. Drugs, what else? Sexual. Yep, you guys are on the same path. Somebody said pregnancy, somebody said sexual. Yep, we're going to do screenings for that STDs, right? Mm -hmm. in our adolescent population. That'll be some secondary that we could do. What do we need for Medicare reimbursement for home health nursing? Skill care. Skill. Skill care. So our wound care, our IVs, uh, central line dressings, those kind of things, right? Um, what do we know about Medicare? Is it federal or is it state? Federal. federal federal, and our Medicaid is federal too, but it's administered states. by the state, right? Mm -hmm. And we remember the way we remember that is they have different names in different states. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, they need to be homebound if they want Medicare, mm -hmm. right? So Medicare is a, little, a lot more rigid, uh, but they have to be because they have separate guidelines. Okay. Um. Who's more independent, institutional parish nursing or congregational? Congregational. Good, because it's all they're all on their own, right? They're not involving other people in there. Any time, oh, I, well, who's our biggest group of homeless population increasing? Single parents. Single parents. Yeah. Families with kids. Yep, families with kids is going to be our biggest one that we see. What do we know in our rural communities about chronic illness? They have a lot of it or a little? A lot. A lot. Yeah, they have an increase because they don't see those healthcare providers as much, right? Because there's not as many out in the farmlands. Um, we also know that what do they... They have a lack of reporting, a lack of anonymity. Why is that? What do they not report? Rapes. Rape. Yeah. Abuse. And abuse. Yeah. <laughs> what else? Mental illness is going to be a big one they don't talk about. They don't report because they're afraid everybody will know it. And there's a stigma with mental illness, as everyone knows. Uh, if we're working with our Mexican immigrants, what are we going to do with them before we start caring for them? Chit chat. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Touch is okay for Mexicans. Yeah. Mexican yes. culture. Yep. Um, what's our case fatality rate? All 
Remember case, case fatality case. rate. It's like when they're gonna die, like what what the disease is, and how long they have mm -hmm. to live. So it's really the case fatality rate. It's how likely am I to survive? Okay. Right. How likely? How many cases have died? And given that rate, how likely am I to survive? Okay. If somebody is looking at a study and they're reviewing evidence that they already had, they're just reviewing. What kind of study was that? Do you remember? Is that the e ecological or no? No, we're reviewing what's happened over the past. Retro, oh, retro. Good. Good. <clears throat> remember oh. retro, the way I always tell people to remember this is retro. Think about like when they say retro clothing or retro, mm -hmm. like now everything's 70s. So it's retro, right? It's in the past. It's coming back. So that's how you remember that one. Retrospective. Okay. It has the word right in there. Uh, what is the World Health Organization? What do what does it do? Does it set the guidelines for healthy people twenty thirty? No, but that was close. World it, Health Organization. It, set, it sets the guidelines for nursing or healthcare. Mm -hmm. It does. So, Let's be a little more specific, guys. You're on the right path. What kinds of things? It monitor drug reactions, vaccines, research and around the whole entire world. Very um, good. Keep going. Let's see. Do they want the best, like highest possible health outcomes? Like they want to prevent stuff, right? Good. So they're going to look very good. You're, you're going to look at your drug reactions. You're going to look at our vaccinations. We're going to look at our research. We're going to look at pandemics, right? Internationally occurring things, right? And our public health initiatives, we're trying to get countries all on the same page. That's our world health. Remember, it's world health, so it's going to be broad. Okay. Uh, there's about four or five questions on here that are primary, secondary, and tertiary. So be very comfortable with those. Remember, primary is always going to be with our healthy people. Secondary is going to be we're going to screen, we're going to check those people, make sure that they're not, there's nothing else going on there. And then our tertiary, if we have a condition like osteoporosis, that's, we're treating, we're taking care of that condition, right? So it's always going to be tertiary. So you guys had a question on your test list time and it was about an IV, uh, an HIV uh, person who was donating blood. They have HIV. So what is the only level of prevention you can do? Tertiary. Tertiary. Mm -hmm. Tertiary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so read the question carefully and see, do they have something wrong with them? <clears throat> and you know it's tertiary. Okay, uh, let's see. Who gets the sickest from contaminated waters? Third world countries. Yes, but I want you to be very specific in the United States. Homeless people. Like yes. farms, homeless farms, rural. rural. The rural. So it's going to be our immunocompromised people. They get the sickest, right? Because they don't have that, they don't have that in them to be able to fight it off, which other people will. So if um, so, just be careful with that one, okay? You want somebody that's immunocompromised because they can't fight off the germs like healthy people can, right? So be careful on that one. Um, let's see. Okay, when we're looking at our environmental safety, I did not go over this in my class, but it is certainly in your book. There's three R's that we're going to look at. Anybody know what they are? What's three things we want to teach for environmental health? Reused, recycle, and what's the third one? <laughs> You're right. You're exactly right. Reduce. Reduce. Reuse, recycle, right? So reduce, we talked about this in class, how they're now trying to promote, um, you know, electric cars, right? To reduce that air pollution. So we're going to reduce, we're going to reuse stuff, we're going to recycle, okay? When we are in the home, when we're in a, in a client's home, what are some things we're going to look at? 
safety wise safety like um like rugs row rugs temperature Tushana, say, i think you just ooh. said it Tushana, what'd you say temperature what Temp temperature of the water which was good like what else temperature are we going to look at um home temperature inside the house keep going what appliance are we going to look at the stove furnace. The stove. Yeah. well the stove to make sure it's off but yeah. before we get to the stove in the kitchen the what do we want to make sure is working he, he, the refrigerator. The refrigerator. The refrigerator. Good, the refrigerator. Because think how much, you know, if you go into somebody's home and they don't even check the temperature in the refrigerator, the food's going to be bad. They're going to expose themselves to all kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty important when we're looking at that. So our priority is going to be stuff like what can make them really ill, like a fridge. Yes, mats are important. And yes, they can fall. But our priority is going to be those ultimate things that's going to keep them safe, right? So we want to make sure the temperature's working in the house. We're going to make sure that the thermostat's working, the fridge is working, the stove is off, those kind of things, okay? You know, I mean, safety is always important, but they're not going to die from, well, I shouldn't say that. They could die from falling on a mat, but um, you want to really focus on our priorities there, okay? Uh, what else? Mm -hmm. We talked about Mexican immigrants, what they like. Um, if we wanted to work with somebody on a chronic wound, what are we going to want to do with that chronic wound? Would you want to medicate it first? Make sure they have got pain meds before no. the water? No. No. Think about That's wounds. What do, what do they have to be? Clean. Yeah. Very good. Don't look too far into it, guys. She's exactly okay. right. You want to make sure that that wound is cleaned. Okay. Right? So, yeah, you want to give pain meds, but you're getting real specific. Like, what if, you know, what if you can't give pain meds? So, the priority mm. there is, again, safety. And, you know, quality for the patient. So we want to make sure everything's clean. Okay. Then that's it, regardless of anything. Uh, we know that our young, homeless, pregnant women are at risk. Because we got to keep them in school. Right. Uh, who's most likely to get abused? Children. Elderly. Uh, and yep. disabled kids or people. So it would be kids under one and elderly. Because kids under one, they can't communicate. They don't know what, you know, shaken baby syndrome is common, but our abuse we see prevalent in our older people, unfortunately, which seems so not fair, but it is what the, you know we see. All right. So you guys have five uh, math questions. So those will be kind of like the ones you saw last time. You want to know how many select all that apply here, there are? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, on my test. So yeah. this is that every teacher does like a different version. But on my test, I'll tell you there's, we don't all have the same test. So we pick the questions. For my test, and for most of them, there's going to be between four and seven. Okay, so be careful when you're doing select all that apply. You can pick one out of select all that apply, or you can pick five out of select all that apply, right? So don't say, well, I can't select five because it's select all that apply. And don't say I can't pick one because it's select all that apply. Okay, you got to pick the ones that are right. Right. I'm going to give a bit of advice to everyone. And I've heard this from many students. And I will tell you, my best advice to you is do not change your answers. If you go with your gut, you stay with your gut. Do not change them. If you don't know the answer, a lot of times your gut knows the answer. I know that doesn't make a lot of medical sense, but in nursing testing, I will tell you that's always the case. That's not in testing all around the world, but 
Okay, so um, just a bit of advice. And any other questions that are out there on the study guide or anything? No, ma'am. Thank no. you so much. Okay, Thank so you. just study your study guide. Listen to this review again. Sorry, you got to listen to my voice, but you know, I'm giving you a bit of advice here. <laughs> listen to it, just even if you're driving in the car, listen five minutes and then mute me for a little while. But just as long as you guys know that you can review this, I will put the recording out there. I will send it to your professors tonight so they will be able to share it with you, okay? Yes, All right, to everyone, take care, stay healthy and careful. Good Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.